given f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x and g of x equals 1 over 2x, we have to find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, and then we have to determine the domain for each function in interval notation. Okay, so welcome to the world of functions. <laughs> what we're doing here is we're just performing operations on our two functions. Our f of x function is the first function, so function number one, and g of x is function number two, so that's all cool. Um, I know that these are functions because it has this little notation here, f of x or g of x or something literally anything with parentheses like h of x or even like c of t. Those would all be functions, especially if they equal to something else. So we're just taking these functions and we're performing addition, subtraction, multiplying, multiplication, and division to see what our new function is. So on this memorize this, they give you one notation. I personally like to use the other notations. So I will be drawing those. I think it's easier to understand. So just as long as you can change it, and I think it would e be easier for you, um, you could totally do that. So for the first one, this is addition, literally the add sign. And this f of x or f plus g of x, so all we're doing is dividing. This is the same thing as saying f of x plus the g of x. Now all you got to do is just substitute, and that's what I have down here. Find the operation, literally addition, subtraction, multiplying, and dividing, is being done. Substitute for what the function represents, and then all we got to do is solve. So what was f of x? f of x was this one. So 2x squared plus 4x, adding with the other one. g of x was 1 over 2x. And then just solve. So I'm just going to uh, plug this all in. Let's see. And this one was g of x over here. So we'll say f of x plus g of x. Or you could put this other notation. It doesn't matter. This equals... Uh, can we simplify this? We could kind of clean it up, but not really. I'm just going to leave it. Um, 2x squared plus 4x plus 1 over 2x. That's the new function. I can't really do anything and pull out a 2 or anything because the 2 is in the denominator here, not in the numerator. So this would be the answer to the first part. This is your new function. Now for the fun part. Now we got to find the domain. So before I um, even go into domain, I just want to make sure and reiterate something that whenever you write your first form of your new function when you do the addition, put like a star here because this is the one that you're going to be going off of your domain. Don't take domain values when you start canceling stuff out and simplifying because that's how they get you. You always got to take the domain from what was originally stated. Since we couldn't simplify this one, it really didn't matter, uh, but just take note of that. Now, if you guys need serious help with domain, have no fear, we are here for you guys, and we have a whole playlist of domain uh, questions for you, domain and range. It's on the playlist on our channel on the homepage, so if you guys need more help and kind of understand like what the hell's going on, um, go back to those. This one's going to kind of be like a quick inversion. Just know for domain, parentheses are exclusive numbers, meaning that we have to not include them in our domain. And inclusive is um, brackets. Okay. So for domains, the two, you know, one of the two tricks is look for denominators and look for square roots because those are when you probably need to exclude some values out. So for here, right, for the top guys, there's really no x value that I can plug in in which the function doesn't seem true. I could put in negative values, I could put in positive values, I could put in, you know, uh, square roots. You'll get a, an answer. However, this is causing the problem, the 2x. Keep in mind that, remember, the denominator 
cannot be equal to zero. So that's my exclusive value. I have to find out what value for X will give me a zero as a whole denominator. So I'm just going to put that over here. Let's say we'll go up here. 2X equals zero. And if I divide by 2 and I divide by 2, I get x equals 0. So I know that 0 cannot be in my domain. I have to exclude it. I have to use parentheses. But all other numbers are fair game. So for your denominator, or for your domain, you can go all the way from negative infinity all the way up until 0, because 0 was going to be causing the problem. Now, they're both exclusive values. Infinity is exclusive because it's just a theory concept, so I have to use parentheses. And now, I'm going to do the second part. When we're saying, when we're just like continuing, we're using an or, so that's a u. And now we're just going to pick it up from where we left off. So it's the negative part of 0 and now the positive part. So I'm starting at 0 now. And I technically can go all the way to positive infinity. A positive infinity is a theoretical value, so that is a parenthesis as well. And here is your domain, for this one at least. So just be careful. For denominators, it can never equal zero. That's your exclusive guy, so solve for what, you know, x has to be. Next one, f minus g. So f minus g of x, which is the same as f of x minus g of x. So now all I got to do is substitute. What was f of x? Well, f of x was 2x squared plus 4x. And the other one was minus g of x now is 1 over 2x. Usually I put in parentheses because with a negative, you have to distribute, but since there's only one value here, you don't have to distribute. Put a star here because this is where you're going to be taking your domain. Let's see if we can simplify anything, but nothing really. So f of x minus g of x equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 1 over 2x. That is your new function when you subtracted the two functions together. No simplifying here, so we're good. Now let's do the domain. Okay, I see the same problem. I have a denominator. Remember, denominators cannot be equal to zero. It's the same thing as what we had before. 2x equals zero. We found x to be equal to zero. So zero is the break. So I can go from negative infinity to zero or zero all the way to positive infinity, but you have to exclude both values, the infinities and the zero. So that's why they get parentheses. And that is the domain for the second one. Pretty cool, huh? I know, I know, this is so fun. <laughs> um, next one, f times g. So f times g of x. This is the same thing as saying f of x times g of x. Okay, well, what was f of x? f of x was the 2x squared plus 4x. And I will put this in parentheses just to keep everything nice and neat. And I'm multiplying this by g of x. g of x is 1 over 2x. Put a star here because this is what you're going to take from your domain. Um... And now let's simplify. We have to be fair. We have to multiply this whole thing by this and this by this, right? So I'm going to say f of x times g of x is, I'll put this for you guys, 2x squared over 2x plus 4x over 2x. And now let's just simplify f of x times g of x equals the twos cancel a uh, bye bye one x cancel there's an x up here that's an x and then plus uh we have x's go bye bye we got two this turns into a two so this is a two now this is super important 
if we just looked at the simplified version, it would be x plus 2. x plus 2, if you put in any values for x, there's no exclusive values because there's no denominator here. However, in the beginning, there was one. There was a denominator here, and that's why I like to do domains from the unsimplified version. By you just doing the domain of this, you would probably say negative infinity to positive infinity. But there was a denominator here that got simplified. So you still have to do the whole thing as we've been doing before. It's the same denominator. Remember, denominators cannot equal zero. That's your exclusive, so cannot equal zero. So the domain, it's the same number over and over and over again, for this one at least. So I could go from negative infinity all the way to zero and, or, or zero all the way to positive infinity. I use brackets for both of them because they are exclusive values and that's that. So this one is super important. Make sure you understand that you do not take the simplified version, you take the one that you write first for your domain. Okay, last but not least, division, f, f divided by g of x, which is the same as f of x divided by g of x. So I'm just gonna put it over here, let's go. f of x was the 2x squared plus 4x, and I will be dividing that all by g of x, which is one divided by 2x. Okay, I'm going to put a star here. And now let's see if I could simplify anything, right? So let's see. Dividing by a fraction is just doing, is multiplying by the reciprocal. So f of x times g of x equals 2x squared plus 4x times... 2x over 1, per se. This whole thing multiplied by 2x. So, simplify, distribute, f of x over g of x equals 2x squared times 2x is 4x to the third, plus 4x times 2x is 8x squared. Um, yeah, if you wanted to simplify it, you would, you would basically go back to this. Actually, you could even simplify it further. I'm going to put it over here. I could pull out a four and I could pull out two X values. And then you would be left with X plus two. Uh, that looks about good. Yeah, because that would be four X cubed and then eight X squared. Perfect. So I'm just going to plug this whole thing in. The one on the right is the more simplified version. And now remember, for your domains, if I just looked at this, it looks like there would be no uh, exclusion values because this is all over 1, right? I could plug in any value for x here and x here and I would get no exclusion values, right? But always go back to the beginning. This was originally divided by a fraction. This is a denominator. So, you can't have this being equal to zero. So in this case, it's basically still going to be the same exact thing. I'm just going to put it over here, domain. Um, in this case, I think we have two of them because this cannot be equal to zero, right? So that's where x cannot be equal to zero because that was the whole thing as to what we were doing before. However, this whole thing cannot be equal to zero as well because this is dividing by an entire fraction. So let me just see something. If we do one over two X equals zero, it's still gonna be zero, right? If I cross multiply, I get one equals two X. Actually, no, that wouldn't even work. Uh, two X. Yeah, I, yeah, because if you do zero, yeah, so this is good. This is fine. So just know it's the same exact thing as well. I'm going to put the domain up here. Domain is 
what did we say before? Negative infinity all the way to zero, and then zero all the way to positive infinity. And there you go. So don't get tricked up with your domains. Always go by the original, not the simplified version. All right? Okay, guys. This was fun. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you want more videos and more math videos coming your way, hit the subscribe button. Um, let me know in the comments. I think I said that, but who cares? I'll say it again. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, you know, hanging out with me. And I love teaching you guys math. So we'll keep doing it. All right. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.